We're giving Frederick Goudreau a new nickname and checking in on the chemistry he's building with Marcus Foligno and Marco Rossi at camp. Plus, are the Minnesota Wild mid? Kirsten and I give our thoughts and early speculation on the Wild squad ahead of the 2023-24 season. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, Livia, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 5, Episode 195. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Bar Down Beauties, episode 195. I'm Jesse Pierce. She's Kirsten Kroll. Joining us to kick off our first segment of this week's episode, Mr. Freddie Goudreau. Freddie Hockey, if you will. Do you like the name Freddie Hockey, knowing it's derived from your non-related same name, Johnny Goudreau? Um, maybe not my favorite. I think they came up <laughs> with some nicer ones since, but that's okay. <laughs> What's your... What's your favorite then? What do you got for a favorite nickname? That uh, well, for? Just not too long ago, it became Freddy, which I like. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, there's a few other ones, but they're just kind of funny. And I, yeah, I don't really mind any nicknames, but Freddy's perfect for me. Where there does Freddy Shootout rank among those list of nicknames? Freddy Shootout? I never really heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're the first one to call me Freddy Shootout, I think. <laughs> I mean, it seems appropriate. Where do you get the prowess for the shootout? Last year, you were like fourth in the NHL uh, overall for making shootout goals. It became your staple. What's I mean, do you have one go to shootout move that tends to work or how has that become kind of part of your prolific identity here in the National Hockey League? I don't really have a move. I think I just have more of a, a mindset going into it, I would say. And um, yeah, I think it's for me, it's easier if I go slower than faster. I just believe if you go slow and you see something right away, you can take it like a quick shot. Uh, and if you don't, then at least you're going slow and you have other options. Whereas if you're going fast and you only have one option in mind, if it's not there, you're kind of screwed. So I try to go slow and uh, pick my options. I like and that. I mean, it, talking a little bit more about that too. I mean, it's, I feel like over time in the NHL and especially shootouts have been a little bit more of a controversial topic as of late how do you personally feel about the shootout I mean you know you'd rather get it done in regulation but do you have some fun with it yeah I think it's fun uh it could be frustrating sometimes of course you know two uh two good teams going at it going to big games and then having to uh finish it out or determine who has the two points on a shootout sometimes could be frustrating but um at the other end, it's, I think it's fun. It brings a, a lot of good uh, uh, things to the game. I think the, the fans like it. It's uh, it's exciting. Um, yeah, it just brings a lot of good energy in the rink, I believe. And, I mean, personally, of course, I like it. I think it's kind of fun. Who's the hardest goalie you faced in a shootout, whether uh, it's even in the National Hockey League or beyond? I would say uh, Shesterkin. Mm. Uh, yeah. He's good. Of course, he's good. But yeah, you know, there's uh yeah, there's just goalies that are just, you know, big. I mean, they're all I mean, they're all so good. You just got to find a little hole. I've been lucky on a few of my shootouts too. So sometimes you need a little balance, you know, a puck that just I got a I got one on um against the Islanders just hit the mitt and then it went down, but you know, you need those bounces too sometimes and it gives you uh confidence going forward and um, but yeah, they're all so good. I think, uh, in the NHL, there's no question. All the goalies are so good. Yeah. And up in the press box too, whenever we see it, we all know whenever you come out on the ice, they're like, Freddie's going to get it done. He'll, he'll score for us. We'll put the check mark there knowing that's going in. That's, so that's okay. a testament to you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. But don't, don't, yeah. Don't uh, <laughs> talk too fast. It's always, uh, it's always hard, you know, it's, and then the crowd gets going, you get a stay in your bubble and stuff, but. I appreciate your your trust in me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and that also could be a 
factor in what played into a five-year extension for you last spring. How excited are you to be staying in Minnesota? I'm uh, I'm just so happy. Um, I felt like uh, like at home the first day I came here. Um, I had been told about the organization that it was just a very classy organization that uh, they were prioritizing uh, good people over anything. Um, and it's been proven to me since the first day I got here. I felt like home, like I said, I felt like uh, it was just a bunch of brothers here in the locker room, a bunch of just wonderful human beings, just good people. And then same thing with the staff. So um, I, I feel like the values of the organization are values that uh, I feel connected with. So um, for me to stay here and uh, represent the, this team and play, um, play for this team for five years, I think it's a, uh, it's a huge honor and I'm very grateful for all of it. Um, my wife's from here too which uh which is awesome you know we have our family here and uh it just is very good energy for me in minnesota and uh, every night is just so fun to play in this building it's loud the fans are awesome and uh yeah i couldn't ask for anything better i'm very grateful to stay here and there's the familiarity with mr dean evson do you have any dirt any good untold stories from your time when you guys were in milwaukee together at all or you know give us a little something to chirp him about uh to chirp him <laughs> about the art you know, I have a ton of respect for Dino. Um, I, we both do. Um, you know, Dino, uh, the first year he sent me in the East Coast, um, and he's always been honest with me. He told me why, and he told me what he he believed uh, I needed to get better at. And um, you know, I did. I worked on my on my game, and uh, so you know, he's been the coach that sent me down. He's been the coach that that called me back up, that gave me trust. Um. Uh, that gave me my opportunity when I deserved them too. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, timing everything just kind of happened the right way after that. But, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, a ton of respect for him. It's fun to play for him. Uh, he's the one that uh, I think also talked with the management first here to talk about me and uh, see what their plans were and if the, maybe there would be a spot for me. Uh, two years back, you know, before I signed as a free agent there. So yeah, ton of respect for him. Uh, I think it goes both ways. I mean, he commands the respect too. He would definitely take Rick Bonus in a fight, right? Cause we saw little potential of that. I think last year, I don't know if you saw the replays of it. Hilarious. I, my money's on Dean every single time. I think. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I think Dino has a, he uh, seems like he has a lot of grit and I think, yeah, uh, <laughs> If you go make a couple uh, internet research on uh, our Google search or YouTube search on fights and penalty minutes, I think it proves it too. So, yeah, I think I, I think he has some grit for sure. I mean, it's just kind of that look that he gives you alone, like the stare down that kind of is enough to get you to kind of be like, ooh, maybe take a little bit of a step back now. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of friends that tell me that, like, hey, what's up with your coach, man? I'm scared when I watch your games. Like, yeah, he's actually a great guy. Like, but I, I can see it. You know, it's uh it's the intensity and the and the look. And uh, yeah, I'd rather have him on my side than against me for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Heading into this year, Freddie. You know, you've you got that five year extension, which I'm sure is just tremendous. You're returning a lot of the same team that you've known and loved the team that we saw do some big things last year and the year before. How excited are you to get this season going and, and what can you expect from the Minnesota wild in your opinion, as far as we've seen so far through the couple first week of camp here? I think uh, we're a group that's just um, continuously getting better. We're learning from years to years. Um, and as you mentioned, essentially the core is, is the same and uh, a lot of the guys are just coming back. Um, and of course, you know, it's not, we're, we're not ending the seasons the way we want, you know, the past, the past years, but there's still a ton of positive that we can bring out of that and that, uh, we can, uh, uh, take and grow from. And I think that's what we're doing. Uh, we're learning from that. We're, we're just getting better, more mature. Um, and again, I said that many times, but this group is a group of, uh, good people. Uh, and a group of passionate guys. Nobody's there for anything else but uh, because they love hockey. Um, and to be able to share that uh, that passion 
with a group like that and to be coming to the rink every day with a group like that, I think um, that that is worth more than anything. Um, so yeah, that's our group, good people, passionate guys, guys that love the game. So it's really fun to to be a part of it, like like I mentioned many times. And kind of stepping away from the hockey aspect of things, we hear you're a big outdoorsman. So what are some of your favorite activities away from the rink? Yeah, I love uh, I love nature. I love uh, it's just a good frequency, you know, the birds and uh, just a good meditative time for me. I love mountain biking a ton and uh, hiking a lot with uh, with uh, my wife and our, and our dog. And um, yeah, I think just for me, as as much as I can be uh, in the trails and uh, nature, the best I feel is just a great way to clear my mind and. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Are we going completely off the grid when we're hiking? Like we're no phones, no music. You'd mentioned kind of getting in a meditative state and are we going full blown, like camping, cooking your fish that you're catching? Are we, we all the way to that end? I like that if that's the case. Uh, well, so we're, I'm lucky because back home, uh, we live in the mountain, uh, in Quebec. So my hometown is, a uh, is, um, smaller hometown like 10,000 people but it's a mountain and we live in it and so um yeah it's more like let's say we go mountain biking we got uh, I got my siblings coming uh, along some friends too and then such a good workout to go up uh, we have a ton of fun the legs are burning the the lungs are, are just gassed and and you get to the top and it's time to enjoy the view and just you know talk a little bit and going down a course i'm not crazy i I don't i don't uh do that for anything else but to stay in good shape and uh uh, enjoy the you know my time in in nature and stuff so uh but yeah i I haven't been camping much like i said because uh nature is right at at my back door so (laughs) i just stay home and and i do that but yeah i love anything i i'd be so down to uh to do kind of the van life too. I got a br- I got a brother that does the van life. I'd love that. I just yeah, I love everything nature, new new mountains, new uh, yeah, new views, uh, new landscapes. So I love everything outdoor. If you did the van life, where are you going and what are you packing up in your van? Um, I'm packing a mountain bike for sure, trail shoes, uh, probably a yoga mat. Uh, little iron skillet to uh to cook uh on some fire fire pits you know um and i would go i'd go everywhere in north america i think uh all the way down to mexico you know california uh, arizona um all the good mountains go uh, out west canada mountains that i've never really experienced but i would love and yeah, I, I would find a ton of places. We had a we have a ton of good places too in Quebec, uh, undercover, but not a lot of people know. But it's it's we have a ton of good places in Quebec, and uh, yeah, I would. Uh, we're just close to Vermont too. I'd go there a bunch. So yeah, I would find a I would find many ways to have a lot of fun on on the van for sure. <laughs> You're speaking my language, Freddie. I love that. If I didn't have kids or a husband, or like a job, or like any of the things that I felt I needed to have, that would probably be my lifestyle too. Yeah, I mean, sure, right? probably, but maybe after hockey, we'll see. We'll see what's uh, what's going on, if uh, I have more time for that, or we'll see. But now it's, it's more, uh, I'm lucky, like I said, I live in the mountains, so I'll take that time there, and we'll see after hockey, maybe. Well, you'll get to see some really cool sights when you guys are up in Duluth uh, this week too. Gorgeous fall colors. I don't know if you've seen that yet it's amazing up there yeah we well we've been there two years ago and yeah that's my vibe i would say just uh cabins on the lake and uh sauna there and cold lake and just unbelievable views you know and it when it smells like fall you know you can uh you can smell it's a little colder outside you need a little jacket yeah that's that's good vibes for me for sure you can't go wrong. Kind of final question right now. It looks like you've got Marco Rossi or Rossi. I think it's Rossi now, right? Not Rossi anymore. Is that correct? Uh, I I say Rossi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> he told us if we can roll our R's, it's Rossi. But since uh, we Americans can't Ross. roll them, he prefers Rossi. <laughs> right. 
tougher for the uh, Americans for the R's. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Um, And Marcus Foligno too. How is that looking and how is that chemistry kind of shaping up at least to try out throughout uh, camp and preseason here? Yeah, um, been great. I love, uh, I've always loved to play with Moose. He's uh, he's a very smart player. He brings it every night and uh, I think we have good chemistry. You know, he uh, he makes the simple plays that open up everything and uh, he creates space a ton out there. Uh, like I said, it's just fun to go uh, go to war with him every single night. And then Marco is such a talented player. He's so smart. Um, yeah, his, his talent is undeniable. It's, it's fun to, uh, really fun to play with, with both of them. Um, I think uh my marco would be a, a very good addition to uh to moose and i just you know he also creates space with just the, the smart plays all the time and um he's good creating space down low cutting off with his cutbacks and stuff and makes the the passes sometimes i don't you don't really expect he makes them on the tape and stuff so really looking forward to uh see where that line uh can go and uh yeah just get the uh, more used to each other. Well, we're certainly looking forward to see where the Minnesota Wild will go this season again, preseason at home, kicking off later this week. Freddie, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back at the rink bugging you soon enough, but appreciate you taking the time here on the podcast. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Freddie. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hi, guys. Jesse Pierce with Bar Down Beauties and NHL.com here. Fall is without question my favorite time of year. The leaves are changing, school's back in session, and hockey is back on the ice. That's why I've been so grateful that Livia's doctor-recommended program has my health on track and my energy at full fuel to prep for my busiest time of year. Between morning skates and late-night shootouts, I'm feeling and looking my best thanks to Livia and the Woodbury Center's constant help and guidance. I'm down more than 30 pounds and 19 inches, and while I'm not quite an elite NHL athlete, I am prepped and ready for an elite healthy diet each and every week thanks to my friends at Livia. Join my team in the Livia program where you could lose up to 10 pounds in the first two weeks. Plus, roster yourself today and get three months of your personalized program absolutely free. Call 855-GO-LIVIA or visit Livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A dot com. Livia has been voted Minnesota's best weight loss program three years in a row. Find out why. Join today. What's up? We're back. Shout out to the Minnesota Wild and to Mr. Frederick Goudreau for joining us. I feel bad. He doesn't like Freddie hockey. I know, but you know, I think he likes Freddie shootout. (laughs) I like Freddie shootout. I think that is the, that's the new go-to. It is. I'm just shocked. He hasn't heard that before. Cause I had heard it last season. Um, I had heard it last season. Maybe, maybe I pinned that and I just, you probably did like thought it was just a thing. And then asking him, he clarified it wasn't a thing, but he liked it. <laughs> so, I mean, we have that. Also, I will confess to our audience during that interview, I Googled when his birthday was because I was convinced based off of everything he was saying about nature, he was an earth sign, September birthday. No, he was born May 1st for all of our Zodiac girlies. I think that makes him a water sign. You just prove me right as to like who I think you are sometimes over and over. Like very Zodiac, Taylor, Taylor Swift. I feel like there's oils and essences like a lot in your life. Um, no, not. not so much because okay. those aren't good for dogs. So oh. I avoid that. But if I didn't have a dog, I would probably be a little more into it. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's that's good. How how are we, Kirsten? Since we jump right into the guest, we're trying a new format, guys. We're going to see if it works. So that's fun. So we're going to have our guests first each and every week. Um, Freddie kicked us off for this new formatting. So how are you though, Kirsten? How are, how are things now? Now we can catch up a little bit. I'm great. Hockey's back. I'm excited. Like right now, this is like my very like youthful glow, like energized, excited, like ready to get to work, but check in mid season and we'll see where we're at. Um, since it's just beginning, but I'm very excited. We're not resentful yet. Not yet. Uh, that's yep. to come later. I just don't know at which point in the season that's going to come. Usually end of October. So like two weeks in. Is what okay. I'm yep. That would track. Hopefully mm-hmm. we can push it out just a little bit longer. But how are you? Wonderful. Hockey is back. I do love it. It keeps us busy, keeps us active, keeps us out of trouble. 
kind of usually shout out to everybody that showed up at last night's first live event of the season, courtesy of green belt. Uh, and thanks to Judd Zolgad for joining us. Don't forget. You can check that exclusive out over on our YouTube channels and on our podcasts. Um, actually I lied. It's not on YouTube. It's just on audio because we don't bring our video camera to that. So, uh, check They're us just out. going to have to come out in person. It's going to have to come out in person. We are in Mendota Heights next month. So we stay tuned for that. Um, I want to dive into next week. We're going to do full on NHL predictions. I know everybody and their mom is doing NHL predictions right now. I don't care. We're going to do wild first and then we're going to do NHL. We're going to be able to see what shakes out in some of these preseasons for these teams go in well informed and we still have time to kill. So for our Minnesota wild predictions, let's just start off first things first. Where do the Minnesota Minnesota wild, excuse me, finish in the central division? According to you, Kirsten. Fourth. I agree. Why do you think fourth? Who's ahead of them? Dallas. For sure, Dallas. Uh, Colorado has me iffy. Really? I'm hesitant on that. I want to say they'll probably be ahead, but also I think the Landeskog situation this year is a huge loss. So I don't know how that's going to impact them this year, but I still see them kind of getting the edge above us. Maybe Nashville. Maybe Those Nashville. Are the three teams I have too. And I you would be happy. I don't know why I do this every year. I commit to Nashville based on what they put together in the offseason. And every year I'm like, oh nope, they still can't get it together. But I again, I, I mean, you still have Roman Yossi. You yep. add Ryan O'Reilly, which Oh, I love Ryan O'Reilly. But I mean, I don't know if that's really, you know, pushing the needle for me. But then you have Soros. I mean, you have some mm-hmm. of those regular staples, and you think that some of those young players could finally pick it together. I just you had paper, coach like in it. Andrew Burnett. Yes. And I love Barry Trotz who gets to orchestrate the whole thing. Like a Billy G, Trotz. Right? You know, I like I him. just on paper, they look better to me than the Minnesota wild, which is why I would have them up three. I think if Shifley and Hellybuck stay with Winnipeg, that changes how I feel about the Winnipeg jets. I think Arizona is going to be a really fun team to watch again. We'll talk about all this next week, but that's just my thoughts as to why the wild will be fourth. So, yeah. Yeah, I just, you mentioned Arizona. I just have to say Arizona. Wow, what an off season for them. We'll dive into that next week, but like, I'm amazed. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Who do you think the top three scores for your Minnesota Wild will be this year? I'm going to- It's too easy just to say your top score. So we'll give us, yes. give the top three. Yes, Um, I'm going to pivot for one sec because I hear Bodie chewing something up. So I'm just going to take a quick gander in front of my desk. Yeah. Bodie, be gentle. Sorry, he's chewing up his T-Rex that I just bought him. Uh, back to top three scorers on the wild. Kirill Kaprizov, duh. Yeah, Matt Boldy, one. also kind of what feels like a no-brainer. Now okay. the third top, Jewel Eriksson Ek. Why am I hesitating? Ooh, it's going to be Jewel okay. Eriksson Ek. Okay. All right. I uh, I don't hate it. Obviously, Kaprizov, he is going to be number one. That's without question. I am going to go... I'm going to toss, I mean, it is, it's too easy to say Matt Boldy, but it's, that's the facts, right? Like Mm -hmm. Matt Boldy's going to continue his trend upwards. Um, You know what? Let me see what um, Marcus Johansson can do with a full season. I like that. Let's let's add him in that loop. You know, him and Bolds, if they get that chemistry going, it's tough because I think Matt Zuccarello is either going to do really, really, really well this year because it's a contract year for him. And he kind of knows that he's playing for that contract extension mm-hmm. or I just feel like he's not going to do well at all. And he's going to be trying too hard and it's just going to be a tough go. So we'll, and see we'll give about- him credit. He was really banged up at the end of last season. So mm-hmm. obviously that's going to impact your play, but you're right. Like it's going to be hit or miss with him this season. Who is your number one center? Is Ryan Hartman your number one center? No. Who's your number one center? Marco Rossi. Okay. Because he has okay. to be. All right. There we go. There we have it, Marco Rossi. I'm going to say Jules Eric's neck. Ah, uh, you move. know, that's all I wanted last I season. Know. That is I know. all I wanted last year. Let me see it. Just let me see it. Um, Hold but... the phone. Okay. Where did this change of tune come from with you? Because last season you rolled your eyes at me when I said Jewel Erickson Eck number one center. You literally like thing. scoffed at me. I did no such thing. You did. So where is this change yeah. of heart coming from? I feel like if I did, it's because I knew that it would never happen. All these things that wild fans are pining for and wanting aren't going to happen because Dean has his lines. He's married to his lines and that's how it'll be. So if I did argue that, it was probably just because he wasn't going to not have Ryan Hartman between those two. 
Everybody roll the tape. Go back and roll find it. Fred, I will. You can find it. Yep. Kirsten can find it too. I don't recall such things. I do. It was me and Jewel against the world. It. Oh. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people would be on your side versus my side in that scenario. Eh, it depends who you ask. Including myself. It felt like me and Jewel against everybody else. Oh, boy. Do you think there, and this is going to be another layup, who's the number one goalie? Gus. Gus, right? You don't get a contract like that and not be the number one goalie. True. That's fair. We'll see how that uh, whole uh, rotation shakes out if it is 50-50, if it's not 50-50, whatnot. Shout out to Marc-Andre Fleury, who was very candid and honest, saying he knew that we were going to come into camp ready to question if he's going to retire before the season even starts. And he said he's giving himself the year to see how he feels mentally and physically, which I love. And I think that's fair. He has earned beyond earned that in his tenure and and you know we asked are you still chasing down some of those records past brother and and wah whatnot and he said maybe he's like that would be kind of nice it's kind of cool to just be around there so heart mark andre Fleury, shout out to him shout out to him for another season who do you think uh is going to be kind of like a dark horse or a surprise this year like a player that is maybe going to take that next big step not marco because that doesn't really count no but like somebody else that you'll just be like like the year that Jordan Greenway put up a bunch of goals or Felina Lake, I was like, holy shit, they can play. Like, who is your dark horse for this season? Man. Um, mm, I, something came to my mind right away. And I feel like he will step up because after last year, he's another player who would have to. So maybe this is wishful thinking because we also know I love good defense. Mm-hmm. Do you know who I'm going to say? Mm-mm. John Merrill. Are you just trying to get on his good side? No, I just, oh, okay. I'm really hopeful that this will be, I just don't know who else would surprise me. Like everyone else seemed very kind of. I feel like, like Connor they... Dewar could take another big step. Like there's something mm-hmm. there that I kind of like, I love his speed. Right. And I just yeah. love, there's something I feel like in, in granted again, he'd have to be given a different line combination. You'd have to get a different look, not to negate Pat Maroon and Brandon Duham. And I think that line has a lot of good stuff, but I don't know. I feel like Connor Dewar could really surprise some people yeah. and really find the back of the net more often than he'd been doing even strength goals, not just shorthanded goals. If you will yeah. as well. I know, I guess he wouldn't surprise me as much. Cause I kind of anticipate okay. him taking a little bit more of a step this year. Now that he got more comfortable last year and did contribute in a lot of ways, you mentioned the penalty kill. I just see potentially John Merrill being that player who could really surprise people. I think the potential's there, mm-hmm. but we'll see what happens. I don't hate it. So the Minnesota Wild playoff bound. They finish fourth. I want to say yes. I, wild card. Bubble team. Outside looking in. Because realistically, like not much this season on the roster has changed compared to last year. And they found their way last year. So I'm hopeful. Yeah, that's fair. That's all. I think that's that's fair. They uh, I've heard a lot of people calling the wild mid, which I don't think is a great sign, right? But probably. I accurate. mean, I just think because of the cap situation, I think everyone nationally, the fans don't want their hearts broken again. Just kind of like they're not expecting much from us. So I'm hoping yeah. we can prove them wrong. That's true. You know what? It's always nice to kind of be a uh, quote unquote, the underdog, if you will, though, I would rather be the, the underdog, underdog than be a top dog and have our hearts absolutely shattered. I mean, they're far from the underdog in the grand scheme of the West because San Jose is awful. Yeah. <laughs> Poor thing. Just gross. It yeah. could be worse. Could be worse. Exactly. So and this is going to be the worst year of the cap hit. It'll get better next year. A little better. No. No, a little bit better. We have one more year of cap health. Well, yes, but like yeah. this is the worst year of it because also the league salary cap might go up next year. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. And pending it's... contracts next year, we'll see, might just be a little bit better. Do you sign Felino, Hartman, and Zuccarello right away? Or what do we do with their contracts? I sign Felino and Hartman right away. Oh, there it is. No wonder. All right. I don't disagree. Well, actually, I, I might. I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how, let's, let's check back in in November on that and see how our boys are performing. 
Um, it's it's speculation season right now. We need like a little like intro speculation season with like some music underneath, something dramatic. Fred, can you get that? Because I get yeah. a lot of like, I don't know, just speculation. It's fun. <laughs> it is fun. We're just having fun out here. We're not not hurting anybody. I don't know why lately I've just been so like on edge. Like I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm, I'm really it's the not. the anxiety. Anxiety. So many people say so much worse. It's so much. We're very nice girls. We love hockey. We like talking hockey. Um, shout out to everybody who also came out and talked hockey at the Saints game. Thank you to the St. Paul Saints for including us in their fighting Saints night. Ton of fun. Thanks for checking out our episode. Thanks to the new format. Let us know what you think of the new format. Do you like having our guests right off the top of the hour? Or do you like having it in the middle? So we force you to listen to us drone on in the first segment. I am very curious about where we are at with our feelings, with our vibes, because we're trying things new. Uh, it's also going to be the return, Kirsten, of our um, Buttes previews and breakdowns, which I know we particularly love and have fun with, at least again, for the first few months before it becomes monotonous and tedious. And I'll have to check in on my contract with Kevin Gorg if I'm allowed to pick the team to win or not this season. You know, I'm going to override Kevin Gorg and I'm going to say you are allowed to. We'll see. You know, it's that's Kevin's very serious about it. He I appreciate his input. Um, he's just not out for me. So that's yeah. also a positive in my world. I did laugh. So again, as as I'm sure you have all seen reported, Kirill Kaprizov speaks incredible English to us this year. And so he did mention that he will speak to um, us writers uh, in English, but he will not do it if there's cameras. Like he'll just talk to us whenever, but he just, and I get that, right? And Corgi was sitting there and he just rolled his eyes and said a few curse words. He's like, great. That's just great. And like <laughs> left the room and was all annoyed. So shout out to Gorgi, who's going to have a heck of a time putting together stories about Kaprizov when he don't want to speak to him on the camera. So we'll but give him did, one, more year. one more year. One more year to get comfortable. He'll do it. Yeah, he'll do it. He did. I, his English was very, very impressive. It was very fun. And it was a fun conversation with Kirill. So good to see him back and in a happy mood, ready to go. I think you're going to see an even better year. I know that seems easy to say, but truly, kid's got that dog in him, right? Like, he's just... Love that. Arf. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. That was... Did you not like my bark? Did it scare you? Yeah, it just took me back a little bit. I, it was, it I was liked a little it, DMX-y. but it just... A little caught off guard. Arf, arf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's this TikToker, um, and this guy, he pretends to be blind, and he has this stuffed dog, but then he always, like pretends the dog's not stuffed and is like and like scares people <laughs> it's, oh it's funny we're not recommend. on the same side of tiktok we're not our algorithms are probably a little bit different oh very different <laughs> <laughs> taylor swift starts dating a hockey player my things might change but she's not it's, it's so. possible we'll see um but yeah thank you to everybody for checking this out as always shout out to talk north soda stick grain belt livia royal credit union and jim beam all the best uh, don't forget to check out Soda Stick. Use code Bardown Beauties for 15% off on all purchases. Also, let them know Jesse sent you over at Livia. You'll get a discount there. They're doing three months absolutely free. And uh, yeah, check us out at our next live show coming up here in October. Until then, happy hockey season. Happy preseason hockey. The Wild play Thursday and Saturday. Wait, Wednesday and Saturday? Thursday and Saturday. Thursday and Saturday at the XL Energy Center, Colorado Thursday. Chicago Saturday, right? Is that right? Yep. Uh, I think Not so. Chicago or Dallas? Chicago. I I don't know about Saturday, but I know it's Colorado first up. Yeah, that's my birthday. So you know, feel free to say happy birthday. I'll be hanging out in Leopold's suite because it's the game that he invites all of us to hang out with him. How nice of him to throw a birthday party for that you. It was really nice of him. I should suite. mention that. That's very nice of him to throw me a birthday party. Appreciate him always. What a guy. What a guy. Appreciate you all. Like, subscribe, rate, share, all the good stuff. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.